Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. In this video, I'm excited to show you another novel approach of creating 3D models from a single uh, image input. So this isn't a text to image use of diffusion models, it's more of a iterative approach to using image to image diffusion. So the title of this approach is Novel View Synthesis with Diffusion Models, 3D Generation from a Single Image. Now, what this isn't, and what, but what it looks like, and what has been seen in a few other projects we've looked at that do, that do this, so taking a text or an image input and then creating a scene, um, is using sort of a reverse photogrammetry approach. So taking three frames and then trying to generate something through diffusion that, that matches those frames or matches labeling that or scoring from the provided frames. So this is taking a single frame, so there's actually no way for this model to start from scratch, uh, which is interesting. It's also not necessarily doing labeling, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, interesting approach, and there's some really uh, novel stuff going on here as they, they use the word in the title. So um, they like to use 3DIM as opposed to three-dimensional when referring to a lot of this technology. The basis of this from their perspective is, so they're big on a single reference and a pose. Um, what's interesting is sometimes they mention a pose as being a secondary input and other times a pose being a, an input that they generated iteratively and then used to improve before getting to a final uh, object. So generally what they're calling this process is they're calling this stochastic conditioning. So the idea here is that for every step you create a new perspective, compare it to the old one, and then based on that make another guess, while also in each step um, pushing through what they call uh, a 3D consistency scoring mechanism, which helps round out the edges and basically ensure that each step you're getting closer to something cohesive uh, and continuous. So not having weird artifacts that branch part of a lattice or part of a tr transparent shape into itself, which is how you can end up with these perfect looking chairs and those kinds of things. Now, now granted, you can see the input for a lot of these has most of those slots already visible, but granted that's still really impressive because it shows that the model understands what clean, what clean transparent space is and what a solid object is. Um, window, ha having it figure out window glass is really interesting. I, I haven't figured out how that's sort of working out. But nonetheless, it's pretty impressive. So I'll link to the paper below. Um, this is a really cool uh, just diagram of how their set works. So they say step one, um, you have one pr perspective to go off of and you start pretty much with pure noise, which is how most diffusion models start. And then they show here that this is, you know, the result of the first step, and then another guess at what this may look like on the inside. Now you'll see when we look at some other examples how this second guess sometimes introduces a bit more structural noise and uncertainty. Nonetheless, uh, it's cool to see how this works. And you can see that it's iterative. So there's some number of steps, each improving. Um, and each one of these steps, you could basically look at as an image to image diffusion step. So if you've ever played around with stable diffusion locally and you, you know, there's the image to image processing, that's what's going on here, much less an internal labeling uh, or, or trying to compare to a label it thinks it identified in the first step, which is pretty cool. And here it's summed up really nicely saying, generation with three dim, we propose stochastic conditioning, a new sampling strategy where we generate views auto-regressively with an image-to-image -image diffusion model. At each denoising step, so each iteration here, we condition on a random previous view. So the denoising process is guided to be 3D consistent to all previous frames with denoising steps. So you can think of this as a way of kind of cheating in a clever way and, and memoizing prior results that it is pretty sure worked. Because the notion is the more steps you have, the more accurate each consecutive one is. So if you're selecting randomly in time as that set gets larger, you'll inevitably end up selecting 
a more accurate starting point, and then if the result from, from there is more accurate, you can see how you end up with a really cohesive shape in the end, which I think is the biggest strength of this model, is just having really solid shapes coming out. And they don't necessarily mention that they're turning these into nerfs, but accuracy is important. Uh, and the coolest kind of accuracy is crazy transparent stuff like this trash bin or this metal mesh uh, and, and like wires in specific locations. Um, because, it, because even software and even people screw this up, um, having to use forced perspectives in uh, like SolidWorks or 3D modeling software. And if you use those, you, you know that if you're not using them properly, it's really easy to trick yourself into putting two lines on the wrong plane so that it looks the right way from that perspective, but in reality isn't like correct at all in 3D when you revolve it. So uh, yeah, and then at a high level, they surmise their technical approach by calling it pose conditioning along with image to image diffusion, which they uh, articulate as by allowing the core of 3DM to remain an image to image model, a diffusion model, we can bypass difficulties of designing and training architectures that jointly model multiple frames. More importantly, we enable training with data sets that have as few as two views per scene, which is their way of saying we train this on data good enough that you don't actually have to have really accurate, extensive ground truths to make this approach work. Now, this is where you can really see, with some forced perspective, um, the like how good this model is. So uh, these are some other models that try to do this, take a single input or some input and turn it into a 3D model from all perspectives. And you can see that theirs is nearly identical to the ground truth. Now, you can tell that, that uh, 3DIM struggles a little bit with meshy things. And it's cool that they included something that doesn't work very well, which is the uh, roof rack on this truck, for instance. You can tell, in reality, it's just three sides. And here it's trying to, it looks like a cage on the top of this truck. Um, then here you can see like the, the hood cuts. That's pretty complex. But what's interesting is some of these other models that are a little bit less sure. So where you see blurring, that's not motion blur. That's just basically where the AI what, couldn't quite guess what was going on. And it's curious that 3DIM, uh, in terms of surface detail, um, struggles a little bit, which uh, I think is interesting. And here, um, they basically say our method's better because we can handle um, weird extruded yet solid. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call these solid transparent structures. So like these weird chairs. I will say the first frames on these seem a little bit cherry picked because you can see most cases of either symmetrical alignment, like, uh, arrangements of these transparent slots or you can see basically every miss. And the other thing is that the input images have no background and there's no environment really. It's just a singular object, a singular subject. And for now it's pretty cut and dry. So I understand why they pick chairs and why they pick perspectives like this. Granted the fact this can tell it's a chair and that it can tell this plane is like an X plane is um, pretty sweet cool. And especially, you can tell it's texture wear, because like with this chair here, you can tell the only way that there's any notion that this is where you'd sit is because it can tell, it's assuming the texture is consistent or that this chair is made of the same thing. And what's really interesting is you can see that any side of the chair you can't see is black. So that both of the faces it can't see, it can't tell what the texture is, they're black here. Um, so I'm sure they probably have a clever way of fixing that. Um, just an observation that I found kind of interesting. So uh, this is a sick model. Uh, it's not really text to image, but image to image stuff um, is just, just as much work to be done. And the transparent aspects are really interesting. The other thing that I think is curious here is it can dif differentiate uh, like metal transparent things, but auto glass is consistent. So it's something is deciding, I don't want to make the auto glass Trans translucent, but I will make other solid things translucent. Um, also note there's an absence of any volumetric stuff going on, which uh, I think is interesting as well. But uh, yeah, so the, this page and the paper are linked in the description below. 
definitely give us a like and subscribe if you want to keep seeing this data. We're, we're doing our best to beat uh, a lot of the major publications like Ars Technica or Wired, etc. Um, so we're not sourcing from them. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we're trying to beat them, trying to just, um, co just collate and um, pick stuff that we think is cool and kind of interesting, not just covering everything. And yeah, if you want us to change something that we're doing or want us to check something out, um, leave us a comment or send us an email. I hope you learned something and we'll see you next time.